to the remaining value of represented wealth, but which likewise is at all times fully disposed to convey the remaining value of represented wealth. And of course, there is absolutely one and one only way to accomplish that, and particularly in the case of all wealth and all affected persons, and that is to pay and retire principal at the rate of consumption or depreciation of the related property. Anything more uh, is deflationary. Any rate less is inflationary. So, there is one and one only solution for inflation, deflation, and maldisposition. Skipping to our third categoric fault now, which is inherent, irreversible, and therefore terminal multiplication of artificial indebtedness. Likewise, there is one and one only solution for this category of fault, and that is eradication of interest. Now, Ellen Hodgson Brown, one of her preposterous uh, claims, assertions, a thing which she can never prove, is that if you introduce the interest with the principal, there would be no issue. Well, I've chased her down on that one, and she's always exited the uh, debate because she knows she's in a corner. And the truth is, uh, you can't answer that question. You can't answer for that assertion, um, and uh, probably the best thing to allow to happen would be um, um, uh, to have uh, Ellen Hodgson Brown defend it to me, and this would demonstrate you know, uh, uh, to our satisfaction, uh, you know, the the fact of, of, of uh, that she fell off the wagon on that one. Um, both oars are not in the water. Uh, uh, and to make a long story short, I can give you the answer for it. By the time that she answers for every possible, um, they're not anomalies, um, uh, their variations of uh, the course and life cycle of circulation, the only way she will morph her, her, her purported uh, solution into an actual solution is to morph it into mathematically perfected economy itself. And this happens regularly uh, amongst all these people who claim to have uh, alternate solutions. There's a another fellow in Canada, for instance, who's 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 um, crying out against money as debt. Money cannot be a debt. And uh, he had a YouTube channel, and I, uh, you know, uh, somebody called it to my attention and uh, asked me to to set this guy straight. So I visited, I saw, I answered to him. And I basically proved to him that uh, all money has to have uh, its life cycle uh, in order for it to be a, an immutable token of value. Its life cycle has to p parallel the represented wealth. And that if you just spent money into circulation, I uh, cited numerous conditions under which you would suffer inflation. And that he had provided no means, if he was advocating simply spending money into circulation, that as so many of these people who cry out against money as debt, that uh, he was actually advocating something then which was inherently um, inflationary. Um, it furthermore uh, precludes um, issuing promissory obligations, um, uh, if we can't assume debt, um, uh, uh, to fund uh, further industry. And so it requires this preposterous cycle of uh, unwarranted uh, 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 governmental largesse um, to spend money into circulation um, as if that justifies the way that the money is going into circulation either. Then it requires taxation, which is never linked to the introduction of the currency, um, or who should be spending, paying what for whatever, 
And so basically, uh, under the guise of uh, uh, as if you had justified the fact that debt is the problem, when debt isn't the problem at all, inherent irreversible multiplication of artificial indebtedness is the problem. This is the same thing that uh, Jacaran misunderstood from the very beginning. That's what you ha- what you have is 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 just a plethora of plagiarists who don't even understand the problems that they're ostensibly resolving in a solution and therefore couldn't possibly give you a solution but claim that it is one and you don't even find the qualifying material on their site which proves that it even 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 solves these things you don't hear you don't you don't visit these sites and and find that they're proving how spending money into circulation solves inflation deflation maldisposition systemic manipulation of the cost or value of money or property and inherent irreversible multiplication of artificial indebtedness of course they copy me in eradicating interest so it doesn't cause inherent irreversible multiplication of artificial indebtedness by interest and it does eliminate it some systemic manipulation of the cost or value of money or property, but in their own obfuscation of of all the promissory obligations, they're causing systemic manipulation of 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 money or uh, the cost of money or property in many other ways, which aren't even introduced by the current system that we're 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 crying out against because it's destroying us by these same powers. So what are we after? Are we after eradicating all these things or not? So we understand we have two solutions, the first being to inflation, deflation, and maldisposition, and the third being uh, eradication of interest, solving inherent irreversible and therefore terminal multiplication of artificial indebtedness by interest. And our second categoric fault is systemic manipulation of the cost or value of money or property. And the fact of the matter is, is that the only powers to uh, corrupt um, the cost or value of money or property are the volumetric metric and cost powers, affecting powers, of, uh, uh, that we have already solved in our first and third solutions. So, in fact... Uh, in mathematic fact as well, of course, um, the fact of the matter is the integral combination of our first and third category solutions of, of, of our category, first and third category faults is the solution of systemic manipulation of the cost or value of money or property. So we have already solved that in mathematically perfected economy. So now, what could be an alternate solution? It's mathematically impossible for there to be an alternate solution. And the reason is simple, that anything but the obligatory schedule of payment of mathematically perfected economy is inflationary or deflationary. And these people who are advocating spending money into circulation in order to... um, uh, eradicate inter, uh, inflation or deflation, they simply answer to you they, they, uh, with a retort that, well, there is such a thing as, as um, um, you know, uh, a, a way to pay this money out of circulation. It's called taxation. <laughs> well, indeed. So they're admitting that they have to morph their solution into mine because it wasn't a solution at all. You can't simply spend money into circulation and have it be an immutable tokenization of value. It has to be paid out of circulation, and it needs to be paid out of circulation but at the rate of consumption or depreciation by the consumer for it to be a just economy. And that is exactly what mathematically perfected economy does and mathematically perfected economy alone does. So in all the time that I respond to all these people who've come up since I promoted the idea of a singular solution starting 42 years ago, all of these people are merely purported authorities who so poorly understand the very issues that they're plagiarizing that they can't possibly give you a solution but by saying so. 
And with these tools alone, each and every one of us can analyze the work of these purported authorities and realize that, hey, they deviate from this obligatory schedule of payment at all. And we have either inflation or deflation to a penny. Why would you make it a more complicated thing to emulate my parable of perfect economy, which had a fault embedded in it in, on purpose as a teaching device, and all these plagiarists have just picked it up and run with it as if, oh, money can't be a debt. See, Benjamin Franklin showed us how to, to spend money into circulation and fund government without taxation. Well, no, that's not true. You don't have a beneficial situation then, and this is what I would explain to everyone after I told my parable of perfect economy. I would explain to them, the problem is, if you're not paying that money out of circulation, it just sits there, and it sits there. Well, that's not inflationary, they would say, because, you know, we could, as, as the bridge depreciates, we could build houses with that money, and we could s sustain all this uh, activity at these mills that you've described. And I said, well, yeah, you could. But the problem is, to build that house then, you have to earn that money from a circulation which, if there are many, many more houses than the bridge, doesn't even exist. So if you preclude this vital capacity to monetize our production by assuming that debt itself is bad, when you don't even understand that this debt is not even the kind of debt that you're reacting to, I'm sorry, but you are yet in kindergarten of learning about these things. And so these people, I'm sorry, but that's where Bill Stills, Ellen Hodge and Brown, Stephen Zarlinga, all these people are not only in kindergarten, they, for their own purposes and their own glory, standing up as if they've uh, developed a, a solution, when on every page of my website, it said from the beginning of time, singular solution. All that they have accomplished is division for their own attention. And now what am I doing? I'm 42 years later. I'm spending most of my time answering to the preposterous assertions of plagiarists who don't even understand the problem. The thing is, a promissory obligation or a note is the only vehicle for just economy. I've actually published a mathematic proof of that. And it's a good thing that people like Ellen Hodge and Brown can't get their hands on it because I have to explain it. And basically the explanation we've already covered. When a person develops a solution, they identify the issues conclusively and those then are abided by so to speak in effect to allow the conditions themselves to prescribe the solution that's how math works if you if you have an equation and you've got one thing on one side of the equal sign and you want to solve for a, a variable in the equation, what you do is you ap apply uh, equally to each side of the equal sign in such a way that you transfer the unknown, what you want to solve for, to the other side of the equal sign by itself. And that's basically how mathematically math mathematic solution is always performed. Well, the thing about this, then, is one of our early observations is that in order for, quote-unquote, money, never to inflict any justice on anyone, it must be an immutable token of value. Why? Because if the value of money goes up or the value of money goes down, it inflicts justice, injustice on someone. Now, so in the, in, in the idea of solving all these problems, which in effect is to perfect economy, um, 
We must abide by this principle, an immutable token of value. 